let's talk about infrastructure and how to run it. So who I am, I'm a consultant, I'm a DevOps SRE engineer, but that is, I don't think of it as my passion. I'm actually a programmer. I do all sorts of things. I write databases, compilers, very hardcore stuff, optimizations, and I really like cross programming language will replace C++ very soon if it did not already. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It just happens that in the history of my career, I had a lot of circumstances where people like, uh, you know, who will do our infrastructure? Like, uh, who? And there's not enough people. Of course, DevOps is in huge demand these days and everybody wants to automate their workflows and move fast, break things, right? And uh, I just happened to be in a lot of situations where I might not have wanted to do DevOps, but uh, like people said, oh, we don't have anyone else. Maybe you could do it, David. And I'm like, yeah, sure, I could do it. And that's how like I accumulated <laughs> over seven years now uh, in experience in infrastructure. And uh, I'd say I had quite a decent success because what I do as one man usually requires like a six or more people team and I alone who does it. So I think uh, over the years I've accumulated quite a lot of opinions of where people waste time and what do they do wrong. So today I want to talk about like high level overview. I will not mention I'm very passionate about technology but we will not touch on the technical details like what databases, what orchestration tools I use in my infrastructure, what I found that works really well. But I will talk about like from a business perspective because let's be clear, right? <laughs> Geeks care about technology like me. I really, I read Postgres notes on every release. I, I really like that. I also interested in SQLite, right? But from business perspective, nobody cares, right? Business cares like, our stuff is running and our stuff is running efficiently with cheapest cost possible. So I will talk about like what's important when running your infrastructure and to get a sense in like what kind of infrastructure scale are we talking about. So I have a scale here and uh, this is like from uh, one server with PHP and MySQL, very popular setup. Like I don't have anything against it. If I need a WordPress blog, I just, I don't build <laughs> servers myself. If I have some hobby project, WordPress, click, 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 you're done. You know, whatever. I don't want to waste time. It takes so easy. If you're here, you know, good. It doesn't apply to you. Here at the very end of the spectrum, we have like Googles and Facebooks. Who knows how many servers they have, <laughs> right? And everything in between are guys like, I'd say this applies if you have from three to a few thousand of highly available servers, right? So this is where most stuff fits in. So this is, this is where the stack I'm uh, running, I'm here, and what I'm talking about when I speak about infrastructure. So let's talk about what's important from the business perspective. What, like when I build infrastructure, what do I want how to run it cheaply and efficiently. So first point is use many servers as one. Well, this is like a side. The destination is to run everything cheaply and efficiently. And part of that is we should be able to use many servers as one. What that means is you don't want to SSH into every server separately. You'd rather schedule some uh, container or a VM on an orchestrator like Nomad or Kubernetes. I will talk about specifically about everything I use. And uh, it's very convenient if we could just have entire hardware, all of our say three or hundred or thousand servers just as one supercomputer engine dump workloads into it and everything should ideally work, right? So another thing that we need, of course, this is the main goal, we should be able to use as little hardware as possible. And I see a lot of people, 
especially cloud is very popular these days and if people they have the tiniest service and they're like oh that's another terraform entry and okay that's another vm that's another elastic load balancer and all these things cost money right i'd rather have a server a few servers that can run many things on them than to just keep creating vms and keep paying more and more of course for people it's convenient but it costs so we'll prefer using as little resources as possible and i'll spoiler alert i prefer bare metals i will nudge people you should rather own your own machines than to use a cloud because of course if cloud sells you uh, your computing power they add the premium right so we can avoid it you can have a cloud <laughs> your own cloud but do not have the expenses of a cloud and of course security is also important well how do you say like some businesses if their entire database is dumped who cares right but we assume and for I have clients that security is very important so yeah, we'll also touch on that. If you have security by, and you do security by default, you don't have to think, is it important or is it not? If you have it, you just, uh, you're just confident in it, that, you know, even if someone leaves database, you don't have to think, well, you don't have to think about implications if you do everything securely from the get-go. And also what I really like in my infrastructure that I run is we should be able to revert things. And uh, a lot of people just run infrastructure like typical case Debian or YAM packages and you know, upgrade runs and you have to pray. <laughs> There's no way back. If it fails like, oh, well, now you're sweating, you're sitting in your computer, there's nothing you can do. And we'll talk about how to deal with this. There are ways to run infrastructure where you can revert everything and just a lot of people don't know about it it's niche so far and uh, also the next point we prefer simplicity and i see engineers waste so much time they just over engineer stuff very early oh well will it scale like the typical saying like will it scale and uh, they create all sorts of services. I've seen entire projects, which should have been super simple, like super trivial project, like database and a few services and you serve REST requests, but people created like tens of uh, services and all that and uh, the project dragged on for years and years and it failed. <laughs> and it failed simply because people made, people dug themselves a hole. That's the only reason it failed, right? So we'll talk about always try to keep it simple, prefer simplicity, and we'll talk specifically how to do that. And also we'll talk about machine longevity. Uh, if you provision machines, let's like say you want to install Postgres on a server, you have a few ways, right? You can do a Debian package from the repository or you can run uh, Docker container with Postgres image. What's the difference is that, you know, if you run Docker container and you remove it, you stop running it, the machine is not affected. But if you use Debian packages or YAM packages, then you have a lot of stuff that might not be trivial to remove that uh, might affect the machine state negatively. So we'll talk about that very specifically details. And uh, the seventh point, oh, so it's high availability. We want to be up if a single data center is down or if single server goes down, we want to be keep on running. So this is how I, uh, what are the, you know, high end goals of how to run, not how to run, but what we want to achieve when running infrastructure. And what do we use? What orchestrators we use? What load balancers we use? Like uh, what service registration we use? All of that will be a side effect and we'll talk about this later in future videos. I'll make separate uh, videos about orchestrators, load balancers, 
service uh, registration, monitoring, alerting, all of that stuff. And uh, hopefully everything will serve cohesively a single unit just to achieve all these high level goals right here. So this is me, David, Trivial Solutions, IO, I'm signing out. Peace.